Okay, uh, hey everybody, how you doing? Teching's hand here. Before I come on camera properly, I just need to make one thing perfectly clear, alright? I lost my Tommy Wiseau wig, okay? I looked for it all morning, it would have been perfect for Aizawa's video. Cannot find it. It is gone. Vanished into the proverbial ether. Now, I had to make a compromise based on my only other option I had. You try to find a long black wig in the middle of December in rural Pennsylvania on last minute notice. It's not going to happen, okay? So, please do not laugh. Just just imagine Aizawa went into the local hair salon and he asked for, you know, give me a radical change. All right, just just think of that, okay? All right, good. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Presenting the Erasure Hero. Eraser head with <laughs> I look like I'm in a really shitty 1980s glam rock band or something. No, <coughs> no, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Okay, well, yeah, no, I give you permission to laugh at that. That's pretty bad. Okay. Oh, that's my Hashwolf wig that I used to wear back when I was reviewing Bleach. It was the only option. Ah, oh, this is off to a great start, right, Aizawa? I'm sure Aizawa would be very amused right now if he saw this. He would just be like, ah, oh, yes, you are truly very, uh, very entertaining, young man. Actually, you never know with Aizawa. You never do, because he gives off the, uh, the appearance of somebody that hasn't slept in, like, the last decade. Like, this really just, like, uh, shabby-looking dude, hasn't shaved, always wearing what looks like pajamas everywhere, long hair, unkempt, just looks like he's about to keel over. But every now and then he could summon up a bunch of energy he could be like okay class take your seats today we're deciding class representatives you never know or he gets kind of like sadistic and he's like all right everybody sit down hold on a second i need to have a nutritional drink Ugh. sensei what are we doing ida just shut up i'm not in the mood right now just <sighs> okay Today, we're going to Training Ground Beta, where we're going to have some battle training with yours truly. Oh, this is going to be a fun day for me. <laughs> Get dressed. <laughs> okay? So you never, you never know with Aizawa, but okay. So Aizawa is the homeroom teacher for Class 1A, uh, which, fun fact, it wasn't even originally supposed to be Aizawa. Horikoshi planned on Midnight to be the original uh, homeroom teacher of uh, Izuku's class. So uh, I wonder how that would have went for uh, the students instead of you know what Mineta would have gotten expelled on the first day pretty sure he would have because midnight would have walked in and she'd be like okay class welcome to ua then Mineta would have been bouncing off the walls and landed right in her cleavage and well i don't know with midnight she might have been like well hello there aren't you excited you know like, you never know with that that's somebody write a fan fiction you can maybe write some what if scenarios regarding if midnight was the homeroom teacher but it ended up being aizawa okay and aizawa is effectively deku's first obstacle upon starting UA. He already had enough, a hard enough time passing the entrance exam, you know, with uh, only uh, three broken limbs, I think, both of his legs and one of his arms, and pounding out a giant robo. But uh, he managed to pass the entrance exam. Then, on the first day of school, the first day, I mean, do you remember your first days of, like, high school? I don't know about you, I mean, it depends on which country you're in, but the first day of school, honestly, the first week of school, when I went, it, it was, it was a joke. It was nothing. It was basically just like the teachers didn't really want to do anything extensive or too heavy. The first day was pretty much just like passing out forms. You know, here are the syllabuses. Here, here's what the class is about. This is algebra. We're going to be learning about algebra. Take this. Get your parents to sign it. Okay, just study hall for the rest of the period. That was pretty much what it was on the first day of school. So, you know, first day of school, Aizawa comes in. He's in the sleeping bag. All the students are looking at him like, is this guy our teacher? And he's like, oh, I'm so tired. I could die and then he's sucking on a nutritional beverage and they're like okay this is a, a weird dude so he gets up and he's like all right everybody get dressed we're going to the baseball field we're gonna have a cork apprehension test day one and everyone's like well day one aren't we supposed to be going to like orientation ceremonies or whatever and he's like do you think you could be a real hero just by going to fancy pantsy ceremonies get dressed we're doing this 
he says it a little bit less energized than that, but they all go to the, the baseball field to practice their quirks to see exactly what level they're at right now. And this is the point where Aizawa really explains his philosophy here on the whole quirk thing. He talks about how um, he, he usually refers to things that like being the height of irrationality, something that is rational or irrational. He's talking about how in society they restrict people's use of their quirks. Whenever you're in elementary school or middle school, you know, they'll give you fitness exams, but you're not allowed to use your quirks during said fitness exams. This whole thing is extremely irrational to Aizawa because he's like, what's the point of even having them then? Let's say you have a quirk that allows you to jump really far, but you're not allowed to use it in middle school when you do the standing long jump. What's the point of even taking it then? That you don't get an accurate, you know, uh, gauge for your physical ability if you're not even allowed to use your quirks. That's such a big part of our society now. So he's like, you know what? Um, I know up till this point you've done training with your quirks and everything, but there, you've probably never had a moment where you've been able to cut loose in a controlled environment like at school where you can actually, you know, um, you know, rate your quirks compared to each other. So that's what we're doing today. And uh, just uh, as everyone's getting kind of excited about this and just like, oh yeah, this is what this is what it means to go to you way we're at an actual hero course right now so we're not going to be held back anymore imagine these kids all throughout their elementary school and middle school days like you're not allowed to use your quirks um you know it's restricted it's against the law right everyone kind of has to be similar but then we get to ua when you're actually training to become professional heroes you're kind of given the go-ahead so a lot of the students like kirishima and everybody are like yeah this sounds like fun let's do this let's cut loose finally see what everybody can do and uh aizawa right at the height of this excitement he's like oh you're getting excited, are you? You think this is a lot of fun, don't you? He's like, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's great. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, person that gets the lowest score is immediately expelled. You still think it's a lot of fun? This is serious business. Now get to work. So, yeah, he kind of does a good job at striking the fear of God directly into students. I, I don't know if you guys had teachers like that. You know, Aizawa is not really the homeroom teacher you want to have, okay? Because when I was in high school, no, middle school, okay, my middle school, we had the same homeroom teacher for three years of middle school or junior high, depending on where you're at in the world. You might call it a different thing, but it's like right before uh, high school, right? So, uh, he was the kind of guy that was very serious. He also, uh, coached baseball and taught English and he was just, you couldn't goof off in his classroom. You even tried to like snicker or something. He would just be on you. Just like, if you're in his room, you just do your work and then be quiet the rest of the period. That was the kind of teacher he was. Okay. So Aizawa, I can kind of see in that at first, it doesn't really look like much. He just shows up in his pajamas and a sleeping bag, but then he starts with that. And he, like the students are out there in the baseball field. Like, yeah, the person that gets the lower score is immediately expelled from the hero course that would be like okay oh boy that's uh, crap why couldn't we have been in class 1b i don't think vlad would have done something quite as uh, edge of the line there you know kind of like okay well we're walking the tightrope right now if we fail we're done uh vlad is the kind of more physically imposing type but he seems to be much more of a easygoing teacher than aizawa you know what i mean so here's the thing with aizawa we don't know how long he's been teaching at ua but it's uh he's definitely taught at least one class before Izuku's the class before his he just expelled everybody and because uh, that actually happened he later on we find out he sort of has like an everybody passes or everybody fails sort of mentality where he gauges everybody's quirk abilities and sees how they play off each other and everything and like th what their motives are like if they really want to become heroes uh, if they want to be here and they have the correct like if they pass the criteria in Aizawa's eyes which are very important, um, then he'll keep them around. But as the case with his last class, he didn't see that in them, so he just failed everybody. Um, so we do know how Aizawa became a teacher. This was actually revealed in Vigilantes, the spinoff manga, and we're, we're going to be referencing Vigilantes a lot in this uh, video because Aizawa actually pops in a few times during Vigilantes, so it's really cool. Um, so... Apparently, it was actually Midnight was the one that recruited him. Uh, Midnight came up to him and was like, yeah, I'm uh, now teaching at UA. N uh, Principal Nezu contacted me. And Aizawa's like, oh, really? Well, you have fun with that. And uh, Midnight's like, yeah, you know, all those adolescent children, I'm going to squeeze them. And it's just like, <laughs> and as I was like, okay, I don't need to know what your <laughs> teaching, you know, philosophy is. It sounds like it's really kind of messed up slash illegal. So I'm just going to walk away. And 
and uh, Midnight's like, why don't you teach too, Aizawa? I can put in a word for you. And Aizawa's like, me teaching? That would be the height of irrationality. And he just kind of smirks and then just walks away. But then the next day, Midnight's like, hey, I put in a, a recommendation for you at the school. And Aizawa's like, really? So Vigilantes takes place back when Izuku was in middle school, but we don't know the exact year. So it's, I would say, at the maximum four years before the start of My Hero Academia, the, the the main, the core series, all right? So between, like, you know, four to one years ago, he started working at UA, and he had the first class, and he just, he just failed them because did, they didn't have what it takes, right? So... For the most part, during the Quirk Apprehension Test, Aizawa doesn't really get involved. He's just kind of watching everybody, seeing what they can do. But then, you know, Izuku is going through all of the tests, and he's clearly at the bottom of the barrel. Like, he can't even compare. You know, like, you have the test to uh, determine, like, uh, grip strength. And, you know, freaking Shoji walks in with his giant, like, eight giant octopus arms and just... You know, and uh, then, of course, you have Ida for, like, the 100-meter dash. You know, there's no way he could even compare. And then, finally, we get to the ball toss. And this is, like, one of the last things to really prove his worth here. And Izuku's like, this is the one thing that I might be able to actually do well on. If I use um, one for all, I can at least throw the bar really far, but I'll wreck my arm if I do so. Now, Aizawa, of course, does not know... Izuku's quirk is, um, you know, a one for all, but he at least understands from what he saw during the entrance exam how Izuku fought against that giant robo. He at least understands, like, okay, this, ki this kid has no control over his quirk whatsoever. Every time he uses it, it risks literally breaking his limbs, it, like, just shattering them. So that's just, this is stupid. So Izuku is about to throw the ball, and right before he throws it, Aizawa activates his own quirk, which is Erasure. So it's really simple. Anything that any person that comes in contact with Aizawa's field of vision that meets his gaze, uh, he has to at least see a part of the person's body, like their actual flesh. Uh, but as long as he can, you know, as one part of that is in his line of sight, their quirk is um, erased, effectively, as long as he maintains eye contact. Now, there are a few exceptions to this. We'll get into that later when we talk about his quirk, like, directly. But he is able to cancel out other quirks. That is his, that is his quirk. So he uses that to disengage uh, one for all the ball you know, he drops it doesn't go very far and he goes on this speech to izuku where he's basically just like yeah you're not cut out for this you're, you're not supposed to be here i don't know what the hell those people were thinking when they passed you it was the height of irrationality um you can't use your cork like let me let me posit something to you here midoriya let me just throw an idea out here for you a hypothetical um you go and face off against a villain who is, let's say, robbing a bank for some reason. That so very rarely happens in our world, but they're robbing a bank. You show up, and you activate your quirk, and you land a punch. And afterwards, let's say you miss. Let's say you throw a punch, but you miss. Your arm is broken. What good are you? Like, yo, yeah, I could use my other fist. I'm like, okay, what happens if you miss with that one? Or what happens if they block it? Or what happens if anything else happens? Any of the millions of things that could happen while you're trying to be a hero. What happens if you break up that one robbery and then another one happens a block away? Someone's robbing a convenience store. You have two broken arms. What the hell are you going to do? You're not going to be a very good hero. That's what you're not going to be. So, um, yeah, he tells him that and he gives him an option. He kind of gives him an out. He's just, in no uncertain terms, Aizawa tells him, you know, if you keep going with this, you're gonna fail, because you're at the bottom of the barrel right now. Um, I'm basically just stopping you so you don't have to break another arm. But, yeah, you're not cut out for this. And I guess, you know, Izuku could have been like, okay, you're right, and then just walked away. And he could have just left the school, and Aizawa probably would have kept everybody else on, and he's like, all right, well, kid, at least, at least he listened to me here. But, of course, Izuku being Izuku decided, no, I'm going to try to prove him wrong. So, you know, Aizawa releases, you know, he blinks and he releases his uh, erasure on Izuku. And he's like, okay, fine. You want to still do this? I gave you an out. Pick up the ball. See what you got. And so Izuku picks up the ball because he's not going to coddle him. You know, Aizawa's like, I just want to make him aware of how stupid this is. But I'm not going to hold his hand with this. If he wants to really try it so badly, if he thinks he's got a rain on this, he has to prove it. So, Izuku then decides, like, well, I can't control one for all very well and the output power, but one thing I can control is at least what part of my body is outputting one for all. So, all I can really control is just my fingers. So, he does that. He uses one for all just in his fingertips, 
flings the ball super far. I think it goes like slightly further than Baku goes at the point. And he breaks both of his fingers in the process, but he kind of looks over to Aizawa and he's like, See, Mr. Aizawa, I can still move. And then you have the moment. This is kind of a trope that happens a lot in anime and manga. I love it. I, I really do. It's whenever you have a, like a really serious stern character. In this place, it's it, it's Aizawa. And he's like talking smack down to somebody. Maybe it's the main character. Maybe it's a side character. He's just talking smack like, you'll never be good at this. You should quit right now. There, I don't even know. It's a complete accident. It's total luck how you even ended up here. You're not cut out for this. And then... The, the, the character in question does something to blow expectations and the, the person that was talking down to them is like, this kid, you know, and that's what happens. It's like the uh, epic music cues up in the background and Aizawa sees him and he's like, I could still move Aizawa sensei. And he's like, this kid, you know, he's in, he's a scrappy one, but he has heart, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I just love it because it's like, yeah, he's got this. He's the main. It's almost as if the character realizes they're dealing with an MC. Like, Aizawa sees that and he's like, oh, okay, he's the main character. I can work with this. <laughs> you know, da 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 da. And then, you know, My Hero Academia plays. Okay, so, um, he's still not out of the woods yet, but he's at least, he's proven himself to Aizawa. He's at least proven him that. Number one, I want to be here. I deserve to be here. I'm, I want to be a hero. This is not something I'm going to half-ass. And he's also proven that he at least has a better handle on his quirk than Aizawa thought he did. Aizawa was under the impression that anything that he does is going to break an arm. But hey, he was wrong. He still broke a few fingers, but he was, he was wrong. Izuku could still move afterwards. So Aizawa sees this, and he sees what everybody else can do. And yes, even though Izuku did come in dead last in the apprehension test, he still says, you know what? Everybody, you all pass. And so everyone's like, oh, oh, yeah. oh boy. So yeah, once again, the, uh, I think the other students, like Momo or somebody, come to the, the conclusion that's like, yeah, it's completely ridiculous that he would have failed everybody. That's, that's ridiculous that you actually believe that. But no, then we find out later, no, he actually did do that. So it was legitimate, all right? If Aizawa didn't see it, he would have done it. Um, so let's talk about Aizawa as a professional hero here. So he's a little bit different than most heroes, okay? To the point where some people have never even heard of him. Okay, so his hero name, he is the Erasure Hero Eraserhead. Of course, taken from, um, you know, the eraser head of a pencil. So, there you go. Like, yeah, erase your quirks. Okay. So, while most professional heroes are in the public spotlight, you know, they'll appear in broad daylight and bust up the villains, and then afterwards, you know, the news media will show up and be like, present Mike, professional hero. You know, how was it busting up these villains? And present Mike would be like, yeah, it was totally rocking. Check out the full report tonight on my radio show, 5.30 p.m. Yeah! You know, he does that kind of stuff. All Might. All Might is, of course, a huge public figure. He appears on talk shows. You know, it's like, he'll be on talk shows. He's like, well, Kelly, being a professional hero is pretty cool. Oh, I'll hold on. I'll be right back. Zip, zip. So he, like, he takes out the villain and shows back up at the, uh, grabs the mic as before it touches the ground. He's like, well, that's what it is, being the number one hero. You have never have a moment's rest. And then the audience goes crazy. That's what he does. And a lot of other heroes do that as well. It's not really, I think, that Aiz Aizawa really doesn't like the concept, but overall, I think he's just really introverted, like, personally. He just doesn't like dealing with the public in general. You know, he's just like, he's not the kind of guy that wants to be, you know, shoved microphones all in his face. Okay, that was a weird... Oh, I'm never gonna use that motion again. <laughs> he's not that kind of guy, though. He'll never appear on a, on a morning talk show or whatever. Here, here, his style of being a hero is more is more Batman, you know, he dresses up in all black, it's kind of like a ninja outfit, and, you know, he goes on top of the, uh, the rooftops at night, and he seeks out villains in the, in the dusk, and he takes them out that way, uh, he still does his job, and he does his job very effectively, he's, uh, as you can imagine, just the quirk of being able to erase other quirks is extremely valuable, to the point where a lot of villain associations are looking out to recruit him, because, I was like, oh yeah, we definitely want the guy that can erase other quirks, I mean, that'd be amazing, right, right? Um, 
So yeah, he's he's well known, I think, more in villain circles, but even when it comes to like the general public, you have to keep in mind, there's a bunch of heroes out there doing their stuff. You know, like there's not just like three heroes per city, like there's dozens. So yeah, if you go to the, like the newsstand every morning, you're going to be hearing about the heroes that are right out there in the, uh, the, the front lines. You're going to hear about All Might and Kamui Woods and Edge Shot and Mount Lady, like, oh, these heroes are out there doing their thing. You're not really going to hear too much about Aizawa because he doesn't do interviews interviews or anything like that he might be like yeah a bunch of villains were found tied up in the alleyway last night with some steel microfiber uh, binding cloth and they they were taken in into custody and that's all you're gonna hear about and be like oh okay whatever meanwhile you know mount lady literally rushes in and crushes an entire villain hideout that's the story that's what you're gonna read about right aizawa tries to stay out of the public light as much as possible Mostly, I think, because he's introverted, doesn't like to talk to others, but also he has, like, just a disdain for that. He probably has more of a philosophy, like, heroes, heroes maybe should be a little bit more humble. Like, they shouldn't be out there, you know, like, oh, well, the secret's to my success. You know, he just doesn't like that kind of shit. He likes to just do your job and then go home. You know, that kind of crap. But, anyway, his, uh, his quirk erasure. So, at first, it might sound kind of OP. You know, just like, oh, he looks at somebody and their quirk gets negated. There's a few issues with this you have to realize right out of the gate. Uh, the first one is it only is effectual if Aizawa can see somebody. And I'm not just talking about the common issues that you might figure like, oh, you got to blink at some point, which is an issue. But also, if there's anything that obscures his vision, it doesn't work. And if you're in the thick of battle, if you're busting up some villains and you whip up some dust, that's all it would take to make his quirk completely uh, ineffective. That's all it would take. He sees somebody, you know, activates his eyes, maybe another villain comes out of nowhere, punches the ground, sends up some dust, can't use it. Um, his quirk, he actually has to see part of your flesh in order for it to trigger. So if a villain shows up that's dressed head to toe in, uh, like he's wearing gloves, a mask that covers up most of his face, uh, glasses, you know, something that covers his eyes, can't even see those, the hair or whatever. I don't know the exact, like, like surface area, but it is stated he has to see part of the flesh in order to make it work. That won't work. Uh, if there's any barrier or shield that's even like, uh, not in like that's, that's see-through, but like tinted to the point where you can't see him directly it won't work then so that's an issue uh blinking is also an issue aizawa suffers from dry eye syndrome because his quirk he has to keep his eyes open as much as possible it's probably part of his training as well but it doesn't matter how long you keep your eyes open i'm gonna try to do it right now i think i blinked a few times but uh yeah eventually your eyes are gonna start like it's already starting to get a little blurry for me and eventually you're gonna have to blink so, uh, yeah, this is something, and keep in mind, this doing this while you're in pitch combat also. It's just, you know, you're running around, villains are jumping all over the place, you gotta keep moving, <laughs> you know. Um, he can negate more than one quirk at a time, uh, so if there's, like, three villains that are all standing close together, and you can all see, he can all see part of their flesh, then, you know, staring at them, they can't use their quirks, but they can still move. So it's not like they're frozen in place. It's not like they're like, I can't move. You know, it's like, oh, all I have to do is just jump over here to get out of line of sight of his quirk. Or I can just hide behind this car. Or I can hide behind somebody else that's getting their quirk erased. And I can keep using mine. Anything like that can work on him. Now, because that, he doesn't rely solely on his quirk. He knows about these weaknesses really well. So that's why he uses the binding cloth. So the binding cloth um, is a steel nanofiber kind of thing. This is clearly, this is clearly steel right here, steel nanofibers. Um, and he basically keeps them just around his neck. And a little side effect of his quirk, and I'm not even sure, this has to be because of his quirk. It has to be. But this weird side effect of his quirk is whenever he activates it, his hair and the cloth levitates. Now, with his hair, that kind of makes sense. Because Aizawa has really long, you know, really long hair, right? So whenever, let's say if I get this wig on here, whenever he activates his quirk, his hair's like, you know, if it's, it's, it, his hair's like cousin it, he activates it, his hair will literally float up like this. So he has a clear line of sight with his eyes. So that might be an interesting byproduct of it, like just to make sure that the hair doesn't obscure. And also, you'd think he would just go 
crew cut or something, you know, just keep as much hair out of his eyes as possible, because if he deactivates his quirk, then, you know, it goes back, you know, covers it up, but, you know, you think that just, just cut out the middleman, just make sure you don't have any hair that can get in front of your eyes at all, and just cut it off, you know, or keep it short enough so you can't use, you know, that, that can't happen, even if it levitates, you know, it just seems too much of a risk to me, but hey, that's, that's the kind of fashion style he likes, you know, but it also seems to extend to the, anything that he's wearing around his neck, because the cloth also levitates, and he can kind of use it like that, so the cloth's levitating and he can kind of whip it around and he can kind of snare a villain with it you know snare their arm and he drops them to the ground and aizawa like i said he's basically a ninja so he knows all these like close combat martial arts kind of things uh judo throws he knows how to pin an opponent i think it's mostly judo if you really look at it um you know pinning and stuff so and like all that kind of crap uh he also carries some like ninja equipment with him he has like a knife on his back we've never really seen him use it in combat i think he uses it when he's like breaking out of a net or something but you know he has bladed weapons on him if he really needs to use them uh he also carries caltrips so you know uh when he in ensnared uh todoroki during the uh, end of semester exam he tied him up to a uh, light post and you know uh todoroki was just kind of dangling and Todoroki's like, you know, as soon as you leave, I'm gonna melt this with my cork, right? And Aizawa's like, do whatever you want, but just watch the ground, and he just scatters a bunch of caltrips on the ground, so they're little spikes, and no matter where he falls, he might land on them. So he's like, just be careful where you fall when you break through the, you know, the bands, I'm out of here. So yeah, and it actually turned out to be the thing that defeated him, because Momo was able to replicate, not the exact same thing, but was able to replicate a basic, uh, uh knockoff of the binding cloth to ensnare him, right? So, uh, it takes apparently a long time to master this binding cloth. Uh, he talked to Shinso about it. Shinso now has the same basic stuff. And Shinso has actually become Aizawa's sort of, like, apprentice, which I just love. Because Shinso is somebody that starts off also kind of physically very weak. And he has a quirk, so he's better, I guess, than Izuku in that sense. But everyone always looked at his quirk like useless, or it's a really good at being a villain quirk. Um, and so he starts to train his body. So Shinso starts to get a little bit more buff and uses quirk in a bunch of different ways. You know, the, the different, like, uh, support... Um, items he has now so he can actually speak through that directional speaker and change his voice and everything and Aizawa also trains him in the binding cloth because he kind of sees himself a little bit in Shinso Shinso has the same basic attitude kind of thing also doesn't look like he slept in a while so Aizawa's like probably after the sports fest he probably went up to uh, Shinso and was like hey Shinso he's like yeah you want to be a hero he's like yeah it's like okay all those people they don't know what the hell they're talking about. I can't promise you. I Just on my recommendation alone, you can't get into the hero course. But tell you what, I'll put in a word. Um, you're under my kind of tutelage right now. I'll train you up. I'll give you some exercises to do at home. Let's get you a little bit tougher. I'll give you these uh, the binding cloth. See if you can do with that. Uh, get the support department to make you some stuff. And then we'll see what we can do. And so right now, Shinso is... Uh, it's not... 100% guaranteed he's going to be in the hero course, but I'm pretty sure it's 100% guaranteed he's going to be in the hero course. Um, so he is uh, doing the uh, tests with Class 1A and Class 1B, and so he's working together with them to see how well he, you know, uh, is a hero. And in the first match he was in, he they did really well, and they won. His side won, so I think that's good enough. I think to be like, yeah, he's, he's worthy. Now, whether or not he's going to get put in Class 1A or 1B... That's up for debate. I hope he gets put in class 1A, though. I hope he gets, like, he's student number 21. For one thing, that would mean I would have to do a discussion video on him. And also, it would just be like, you know, all this buildup, and then Shinso ends up in 1B. That kind of blows. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping Shinso ends up in class 1A. But that's that's more about Shinso. We'll get to him later. But yeah, at, at any rate, he says, yeah, the binding cloth, it's not something easy you could just pick up and use. Um... Maybe the levitating factor works better for him because of his quirk, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky stuff, all right? So that's mostly what he uses. Now, there's another downside of his quirk, and it's it doesn't work on heteromorphic types. So if you have somebody like uh, Ojiro that has a tail... Um, he can't just, like, look at Ojiro and his tail just disappears. Or the tail, like, like, sleeps back into his body. That's not how it works. Later on, he actually describes, like, how the... How his quirk actually functions. And he states it mitigates the quirk factor. It, like, there's a quirk factor, which is a new part of human biology that evolved whenever quirks became a thing. So it's, like, a whole new part of our anatomy. And that's the thing that triggers a quirk. He can basically turn that off or deactivate it so Ojiro might not be able to swing his tail anymore um 
but, you know, he still has a tail. Then there's the same thing with Hagakure, where people have said, well, her quirk is also classified as a heteromorphic, so even if Aizawa looks at her, uh, she might not be able, it's not like she'll turn immediately visible. But that all depends on whether or not Hagakure has to willingly turn on and off her invisibility, or if she's just at standard invisible no matter what. We would we would think that she is standardly invisible because even when she's asleep, she's still invisible. Also, she sleeps nude apparently, which, yeah, that's a thing. That is a naked Hagakure sleeping right there. Okay, that's something. Uh, okay, so Aizawa has had quite a few battles in the series. Um, I was hoping he wasn't going to be the guy that gets floored all the time after the USJ incident, because during USJ, Aizawa's shit gets messed up up he gets jacked up till next sunday and it's a monday freaking morning okay where uh he fights against all these riffraff villains not a big deal but then the nomu steps out and aizawa like gives it his best but at the end of the day he has like the physic he doesn't have any like power boosting quirks all right he knows martial arts but he's still a regular human the nomu is just like this roided out bird man thing that's like Grr! And so he tries to, he actually does manage to negate its quirk, uh, the shock absorption, but it doesn't even matter because the Nomus are like genetically created or modified humans. So this thing has so much muscle mass, it doesn't even matter if it doesn't have a quirk. It's still strong enough to like break through a brick wall with one punch. And so it just grabs Aizawa and just BAM! 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 Oh god! BAM! Oh! So after it, I mean, he is, he's bleeding from the eyes and the nose and his black eyes and just like, oh, and he just gets tossed down. Aizawa, and I'm like, I'm watching that. And I'm like, oh, please don't make this a regular thing because there's always, this is still at the beginning of My Hero Academia, okay? So we don't know the status quo yet. And there's always like the whipping boy, like the Yamcha that just like in every battle, like Genos from One Punch Man. Genos in like every battle he's in even if he starts off really strong usually just ends up completely dismantled and destroyed by the end of it um I'm like okay Horikoshi please don't make Aizawa the Genos he's pretty cool you know Genos is cool too Genos deserves a flat out victory <laughs> without getting completely destroyed in the process oh man so um yeah this damage uh, messed his eyes up pretty bad. He uh, what, what happened is his orbital floor was completely destroyed. I had to do a little bit of research here. The orbital floor is, I guess, the part of your skull or your eye socket. So it's like right here. So if you actually feel, you put your finger here, you can actually feel it, kind of. You can feel like a flat surface right here under your eye. That's your orbital floor. And later on, we see a scar right about here, so this sinks up. So when his face was just getting curved stomped by that Nomu, um, yeah, his orbital floor here just got destroyed. So it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't mean your eyes are destroyed. Because when I heard, or I don't know anything about anatomy, really, of your skull and stuff. So when I first heard orbital floor, I thought, like, the back of his skull was, like, just leveled and just dust. So, yeah, he had to go through a, some pretty intense recovery. But he managed to come out of it relatively. He could still see. He's not blind. I'm, although, I'm going to say Horikoshi took some liberties with that. Because I'm going to assume if that same injury happens with you, if your orbital floor just gets turned to dust... I'm pretty sure you'll probably be blind or you'll suffer some serious visual impairments. Aizawa's only real, um, you know, uh, lasting damage that came out of that was he has to rest longer in between his erasures and it's harder to keep his eyes open for longer periods of time. So he, he noticed this when he was going up against Momo and Todoroki, like he couldn't keep his eyes open for as long as he could, and in between erasures he had to wait a little longer. But other than that, he could still see just fine, apparently. He just kind of has like one scar on his face. So yeah, though I'm assuming if that kind of injury happened in real life, if a, if a steroided out bird man just incredible hulks you oh, all over a cement floor, you're, you're honestly, you're probably going to get a concussion and die from that, I would assume. But, um, you know, artistic liberties you got to keep aizawa around he's the mentor figure he's the kakashi can't have him you know get taken out just yet um he does better though at the training camp during the training camp he has a cool fight against dobby's 
clone, which that was neat. Um, you know, he doesn't do anything really to face off against, like, a villain directly because Dobby was just kind of messing with him. Uh, he does have a few scenes with them there, but it's not like he takes him out or anything, but uh, it, it was still neat. Um, after that whole incident, we get to see him uh, at the press conference during the Kamino Ward arc, and that was really cool to see him like that because, like I said, he's a guy that doesn't like the public spotlight, and yet here he is wearing the suit, looking all professional, tying his hair back in a ponytail, sitting down and actually, you know, fielding questions from the press here. And that's something that he does not want to do. But after everything that happened at the training camp, he understands he's, he, he understands his responsibilities. Okay. So if nothing else, that's the kind of guy he is. He's just like, okay, you know, I kind of, I didn't really want to be a, uh, a teacher to begin with, but it's the path I ended up taking and I have to accept the responsibilities for that. So I have to do this, even if it means like, I don't like talking to the press and they were pissing him off at a certain point. There were certain questions that were being raised. Like, I think somebody questioned like, Oh, you know, uh, don't you think the teaching at us, uh, I mean, UA is pretty messed up or don't you think your train, your teaching is not very accurate if this kind of stuff were to happen? Or are you afraid of Bakugo going to the, to the villain side? That, that was what it was because it was like Bakugo's actions during the sports fest um, were kind of like, you know, he was like snarling when he won it. So the uh, reporter was like, you know, do you think it's possible he could get like lured into the villains from his attitude? He has a major attitude problem, you know, and Aizawa gets really mad about that. He's like, you kind of see him like clenching his fist. Like he just wanted to like shut the, you know, uh, you just shut up, you stupid reporter. You don't know crap. But yeah, that's pretty much Aizawa. He hasn't really had a fight for a while. So I'm hoping we get one coming up soon. Uh, we would really also get to see like the fullest extent of the damage he incurred because we really didn't get to see it too much. We got to see it during the end of semester exam with Momo and Todoroki, but obviously he wasn't going full power against them and uh, he was restrained and everything and we saw the fight with Dobby but that didn't really last long so I want to see like a straight up battle with Aizawa again we can really see everything that he's uh, fully capable of in his current state or maybe if he's been like okay well I can't use my erasures for as long so I've developed another kind of fighting style something like that like I said he basically is like Batman or a ninja like even here he's got like all this stuff on his belt he's got cool little pouches on his belt what are in your pouches Aizawa what are in your pouches um but aside from that, he's a good teacher. After getting to know all of his uh, students and everything, he has like he gives a good like motivational speech on the first day. He's like, "Hey, everybody, come on! You, for the next three years, we'll be putting you through the ringer." But that's what it means to be plus ultra. So let's do this. Um, he knows other teachers there. I mentioned Midnight and uh, Present Mike. Present Mike and Aizawa actually went. They were in the same class together at UA, and uh, Present Mike was the one that actually gave him his hero name because mostly because. Probably Aizawa was just like, I don't I don't care about hero names. I'm just Aizawa man. And and uh present Mike's like, hey, what about a racer head? That sounds cool. And he's like, Yeah, whatever. I it sounds a little bit like a pencil to me, but like whatever, I don't care. And so that's how he ended up getting it. So, you know, it's like one of those things where he's like, I don't care kind of exterior, but he's like he accepted it, he took it. You know, midnight's like, I put in a recommendation for you at UA. Aizawa could have been like all right, but I'm not going, and he just never could have went, but he did go, so it's like, yeah, these are his friends, these are his colleagues, and he's like, okay, maybe, maybe that is a good hero name, maybe I'll go with that, maybe I should go be a teacher, I'll give it a shot, who cares, and kind of like a go with the flow kind of dude, that's really Aizawa, so really cool character, can't wait to see him in action again, let me uh, know below on what you think about Aizawa's character and his quirk, thanks for watching everybody, Turking, so oh, maybe we could get a, uh, a really cool like tag battle between him and Shinso, like him them working together. That would be cool for the, like the next major fight. That would work for a bunch of different reasons. So yeah, hold tight for that. Let's let's give it, let's get it, Horikoshi. Teching 101 signing out.